another episode of Off The Clock. Today, we are doing a video involving you guys. I feel like as this whole community and the YouTube audience has grown so quickly over the last eight months, I think, I've wanted to make sure that I still have a way to interact and engage with subscribers and with you guys. I often do that with Daily Wire on their platform, but I wanted to make sure that I do videos that incorporate you guys and your stories and your thoughts. So we're starting off doing one with this video. I had you all fill out a survey. I posted it on the community page and on my Instagram, and we're gonna see if I can guess what you guys said about me. It's kind of a mix of questions. I have read some of them, but my team put it together for me. This was their brainchild. I'm very excited. All right, so Reagan, what is the first question? The first question is, what is the most popular age group you think who answered this survey? Um, well, I know my YouTube demographics and my stats. So I would say like 15 to 24-ish. Is that an, an option? Somewhere in that range. Oh, 16 to 24. Wow, I'm good. I study those analytics. I wasn't great at math, but I can read a graph. <laughs> Out of the 6,226 people who took this survey, how many do you think are under the age of 15? Oh my gosh. Maybe, I mean, well, if the majority was 16 and up, then 2,000 ish? Is that a bold number or is that, I don't know. I know I have young viewers. That's why I saw, oh my, oh, I thought that, <laughs> I was pulling it out and I only saw the first part of it and I was like 4,000. Okay, that makes sense. Cause I guess that majority age range was pretty broad, like 16 to 24, that's what the majority was. So I guess me assuming that there would be more younger people would just be like the base level of that group. Whenever I meet young women in public, especially, they usually are between the ages of like 13 and 16, I would say. I don't know what it is. Maybe they're just the ones that come up to me, but it makes me so happy. Just because I remember like watching YouTube and being on you know social media and having content creators that I really enjoyed and looked up to, but there were never any that actually fit my values and how I saw the world. And so I feel like I'm kind of filling that void for younger me. So it's kind of cool to meet younger people who are like, oh my God, I love watching your stuff and knowing that I'm like putting something out in the world that I think is, you know, relatively age appropriate. I will put, you know, content warnings on some of my things and I might drop an F-bomb every once in a while, which my editors graciously <laughs> bleep out sometimes. But I do, I am very grateful that I do have a younger audience, which is very cool. Anyway, all right, moving on. How many of the survey respondents do you think were over the age of 65? Oh, um, maybe around the same number, 300 something. Oh, 45. Well then, I guess I know my audience. You know, knowledge is power. I'm impressed that that many people over the age of 65, elderly people took a survey. That's true. I Maybe, the, I think I was thinking of like, I know that I have older viewers and I get comments from people being like, oh, I introduced my grandchildren to your show. Like, I found you through Daily Wire. My mom is like my biggest fan on YouTube. Definitely took this survey. She's, I don't know if she's not over the age of 65, but she's in the older demographic. But I don't know how many of them follow me on Instagram or would know to go to community pages to click on the survey. So that is impressive. Good for you guys. Where is Brett from? Uh, I mean, it's a loaded question, so I will take any of these as correct. I was born in Washington State, young adolescence in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and then Los Angeles, and then Nashville. And I lived in Idaho for like a year. Any of those five, I'll take his. <sighs> Idaho, there we go. That's interesting. I mean, I think I, I talk about Idaho as like a home base because it's where one of my brothers is, it's where my mom is, it's like where our family home is, like it's where I went back for Christmas, it's where I would go for Thanksgiving. When I have kids, like they're gonna go back and visit that home and I def I had a bedroom there even though it was only there for like three months before I moved into another house and I kind of think of wherever my family is is where I'm rooted, so that makes sense. But I really don't consider myself being from Idaho. Um, I do identify as like a, a native Tennessean, even though I was there for 10 years before moving back. And then, but there also is a part of me that does feel like I actually really grew up in Los Angeles and I hate that. I'll hand this back to you. I hate that, 
but I'm also grateful for it because I think it was a very cool place to spend my like middle school, high school years. It kind of felt like I was living in the middle of like an interesting 80s summer flick movie 24 seven. But I do hate that <laughs> like the majority of my young adult life was spent in Los Angeles. Actually, it was evenly split between Chattanooga and Los Angeles, so I think I'm safe, but yeah. But not actually from Idaho. Anyway, okay. What is Brett's favorite band? Um, it would be the band King Inner in 1975. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Good job, everybody. I would say the band King Inner is probably higher than 1975. I really like 1975. I don't know as many of their songs as Band Camino. Like when I went to the Band Camino concert in, I think I went in September or so, that was the greatest concert of my life because I literally knew every single song that was played. That has never happened before and I've gone to a fair amount of concerts and usually it's like, oh yeah, I kind of drive with a band, I know a couple songs. I literally, on my feet the entire time, knew every single song. 1975, I'm definitely getting there because I listen to them more now, especially that I think Matt Healy is incredibly problematic in the best way and very based on like the most chaotic human being on the planet, so I really like him for that. But like all time favorite band, Band Camino. Okay. Band Camino, it was 1975, mm -hmm. then IDK, and then, <laughs> nice. and then the word band, which I think the way this calculates, it was band Camino. Camino? Okay, that, cool. That nice. Off. What is Brett's favorite social media platform? Instagram, I would say. I'm saying. Yep, Instagram. You guys get it. That's also the page that I like individually run the most. I had it prior to coming to Daily Wire and like I post all my own stories. Like I don't hand it off to a social media coordinator. Like even though I love Reagan who is sitting in front of me doing all of this, she will help take pictures for me. But I love Instagram. I love posting on stories. I love DMing people. I love reels. I'm definitely more of a Instagram person than TikTok. And YouTube, even though I'm very active on here, I don't understand a lot of the, you know, SEO, the posting stuff. Like we do have people that like help me with that and, you know, post and manage it. So even though I am very active here, like the social media page that I actually like love using and like know a lot about is Instagram. Okay. And that, backdrop is Instagram. It is. I'm in the, what is the, the logo? I am Instagram. That was also, the platform that I used the most prior to coming to Daily Wire for work, like I worked in marketing strategy, still in the political space, but in the nonprofit world. And I focused like mainly there and growing like audiences there, especially with Young Americans for Liberty. I did some stuff at PragerU. And so I just was forced to learn a lot about it. And I would also run Instagram pages in college. I never intended to become a social media person. It was just like, I sort of figured out my way around it. I feel like that's how a lot of people end up in social media. It's not like we have some like deep calling to the mind suck that is Instagram. We just kind of <laughs> happen to figure it out. Okay. What is Brett's favorite color? Green or purple. I feel like they're gonna say purple because my literally like entire set's purple. Blue, you, no, no. That's my brother's favorite color. My household was divided between blue and red. Very patriotic of us, but it's because when my twin brothers were born, my mom could not tell them apart. I mean, they're so identical that one of them would have their toes painted blue, one of them would have their toes painted red. And as a result, their identities literally became like the red twin and the blue twin. And then they went to a high school. One of them, well, the red one went to like the Marine Academy High School where the colors were red. And then the other one went to this private boarding school where the colors were blue. Anyway, but my mom's favorite color is also red. And I think my dad's favorite color is blue. Like we were literally split. And then I came out and was like, well, I guess red and blue mixed together is purple. Listen guys, family's weird. Blue was your top, mm -hmm. purple was number two, okay. then green, nice. then red, then black. I am goth. I do wear a lot of black though. I don't think I wear it on the show, but in real life I do. I'm very monochromatic. I also think it's easier to put together because I'm not really a fashion person, but I come in every day and they'll like hand me a shirt that is like camera appropriate. That's like not too busy. That doesn't have like a ton of patterns or a thing on it that'll get copyrighted. And it's usually a little more colorful because my set is colorful, but I will literally walk in like head to toe black with Doc Martens on. And I promise I am as bubbly as I am on camera, but I will be in all black. Okay. Does Brett believe in aliens? I think I do. I think so. I'm not like Matt Walsh level. I would like a bit more evidence, but I'm interested. 
I think I'm also more convinced because the government held like, what, what was it back in, it was in 21 or 2020, where they held like a hearing about alien stuff. And they were like, we're gonna do this to give transparency to the public. And then they said the most basic boring things about like, oh, we saw this UFO sighting, it was whatever. And then they were like, now we're gonna go in private and discuss the things you can't hear with like security clearances. And I was like, okay, that means it's real. Like that, if you're not able to actually tell us all everything, then it probably is real. Yep. Yes, you're right. I really just convinced myself as I was sitting here, reconvinced myself. So you guys know me better than I know myself. Okay. What is Brett's favorite state? What is my favorite state? I'm probably Tennessee or Idaho. I mean, okay. I have states that I think are stunning that I would never move to. Like probably objectively, Washington is my favorite state because of the landscape, because I was born there and the islands are beautiful and you get like mountains and water, but it's not sand. I don't like sand. I don't like the beach, but I do like boats. If you guys have watched Grey's Anatomy and you know McDreamy, he's like, I love ferry boats. I love ferry boats. Like I'm all like, and I love the water. My whole family sails, but I don't want to be around the sand. So I like, I don't really love North Carolina and South Carolina, even though they're pretty. Anyway, but I hate the politics. I would never move back. And I don't mean that just as like a surface level, but like they do not value freedom there. I don't feel like I could defend myself safely there. I feel like I would be at risk there. My money would be taken there, so I would never move back. Same with California, I think it's stunning. But again, let's see what they say. Tennessee! Yeah, very accurate. I would probably say Tennessee over Idaho. Middle Tennessee, where we are in Nashville, it's not the prettiest place in the world. People don't move to Middle Tennessee for the countryside. <laughs> like, you move here for Nashville and to make it as a musician. You move to East Tennessee for the landscape. You move to Appalachia, you move, you know, to the area where the Tennessee River is. That's where Chattanooga is. So if I was just thinking about Chattanooga and like that part of the country, like of the state, I would say Tennessee would be my favorite state. I also just have wonderful memories here. What is the one word that describes Brett? Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> You're so confident. Bubbly. <laughs> High energy. Based. Oh, that's, uh, thank you. I'm gonna like make this my new profile photo. <laughs> That's like, that's very kind, guys. I appreciate that. And I, I take that as a high honor. I roasted multiple people in the segments today who were using, actually it might've been in a TikTok and one in the segment. And it was people on the left trying to claim based as their own. They're like, oh, that's so based. And it was a video of like a 15 year old transitioning. That is not, that is not based. You cannot use the word based to define something that you just agree with that's on the left. No, based is literally going against a mainstream narrative and being unafraid to stand strong in your values and whether it is on the right or the left, like go against, you know, the group think. That is how I see based. And usually it ends up being somebody that's more on the right in my opinion, because people on the left are in a brain fog. Um, anyway, so I appreciate that. The second one was intelligent and the third oh. one was smart. That's really nice. I have a funny story about this. Okay, so my mom might hate that I'm telling this story, but one of the, <laughs> First times I remember actually having like an argument with my mom where I felt like I like she had really hurt me. And I don't think she even knew that this like in the moment. We were having some kind of argument and we were on the phone and I was at community college. I think it was my first like year of community college. And I like, I care so much about academics. I care so much about my intelligence. It is like the thing that I pride myself on. I also feel like as somebody who grew up in a kind of uncontrolled environment, like a very chaotic and turbulent environment, what I did have control over was like my education, my learning. And that is kind of, that was like my, tether basically. So we were having some argument about something and she was like, right, you're just not being smart. Like you just, you're not smart right now. And I that, like broke just hearing that I sobbed and I got off the phone. I cried more because that is like the thing that I value more than anything. You can tell me that you don't like how I look. You can tell me that you might not like my personality. Maybe I'm too energetic. I do, I do not care at all. But if somebody calls me like unintelligent, I'm like, because <laughs> I care so much about it. Anyway, sorry, mom, we got over that. <laughs> That hurt me. <laughs> if Brett had to give up one thing for the rest of her life, what would it be? Here, there's three options. Oh, okay. Singing, dancing, or acting? Singing. And I say singing because it's the thing that I'm least confident in. I, which I don't think I should be. Like, my first professional job was doing opera and I did musical theater for years. And when I went to that public school as a performing arts school, like I was a singing, like a vocal major in that school. So I, I can sing. 
objectively, I know how to, I can read music, I can do the whole thing. I am the least confident though, and I don't know what it is about, it's just so vulnerable. I'm so impressed with people who can just like get on stage and just easily do it. And maybe it's because I'm out of practice and I didn't do it enough because it scared me. And maybe that's something I need to unpack in my own time. Um, <laughs> Cause like once I was actually on stage, I loved it and I was super confident and I had a great time and you know, people enjoyed it, I hope, I think. Um, and it was totally different when you're doing musical theater and you're in a character performing, but if it was just like Brett having to sing for people, it is terrifying to me. And so purely because of that, I'd probably knock that one off because acting always came easy and it was very comfortable and made me feel more confident. Dance, similarly, also because I think it's like an exercise, a form of exercise and just like an emotional release. And singing just stressed me out. Look, you guys get me. You understand, you understand. Also probably because I talk about dancing a lot and I talk about acting a lot and I coincidentally don't talk about singing a lot. I know that one day I'm gonna have to sing eventually just because you all know that I have at one point and I'll probably be bullied into it by my team. We haven't done the video yet where I, oh, I shouldn't say this. I'm gonna say it anyway. I don't know how many of these videos are left online because I have privated many of them. <laughs> But I, they're out there because I know you guys have found them. And I went back to my old YouTube channel from when I was, you know, like a 12 year old actor. And I'm like, holy crap, why does this have like 15,000 views now? Of like me singing in church or like at a cabaret and I'm singing New York State of Mind. You've watched it, you've watched it, I know. Reagan is sitting over there all guilty with my little like page boy bob haircut that makes me look like I have a pumpkin head. My mom told me I looked so cute. I did not, Diane, we're all lying here. That was, I, if we want to talk about childhood trauma, oh my God, Caleb pulled it up. I'm sitting here in a room with my team. He like, he's like within two seconds. Yep, that's me and my bedazzled top. Anyway, there are a few out there. Go enjoy, that was like literally 12 years ago probably. I have not had to react to those yet. And there are many more on that channel that are private. Not because they're bad, but because I can only bear to have so many of them out. Okay, anyway, yes. But I do want to, okay, but speaking of Reagan sitting in front of me, we are gonna start dancing again. I, cause I love it and I miss it. Maybe we'll turn it into a video after we get the rust. Yeah, we get good. After we figure it out. But I do, I miss it. I miss doing ballet. I love it so much. I stopped because I, in all full transparency, developed like very, very bad disordered eating and had a very, very terrible body image. I was in a very, very strict, intense, like Russian studio. And I think they had a specific vision in mind for like where my dance trajectory would go. And they thought that I was gonna be, you know, oh, she's gonna join a company, she's gonna be a professional. And for me, it was just kind of like an escape and I enjoyed doing it as a hobby growing up. And it wasn't like I didn't take it seriously, but I wasn't worried about like how my legs looked and if I went through puberty and gained an extra five pounds and it was like a big deal for them. And I remember like standing in front of people in class and being told that like I needed to lose weight at 15 years old or whatever after I'd literally just gone through puberty. But I, I took responsibility and I knew that, that it was not a healthy environment so I left, but I miss it. And I'm in a healthier space now. So we're gonna go dance. Is Brett a dog or cat person? You guys know this, I know the answer is gonna be dog because I don't have a cat. <sighs> dog, yes, but I do love cats. Funny story, <clears throat> there is a rule in my family. Not a rule, but just kind of a common thing. Growing up, we only had cats that came to us. We never bought a cat. We never sought out a kitten or a cat. And I don't know how it happened. Like literally my brother would be on a Boy Scout trip. This is how we got our cat, Scout. He was on a biking trip for a scout troop and they would drive by or ride by this tree and this kitten fell out of it and he rode by a second time another, it, the kitten fell out of it again. So we took it home. Um, and that's how we got scout, like that kind of thing. Or we would be, you know, on vacation in South Carolina and we found a cat like in the trash under the vacation house. Or we found our cat Buttercream in the dumpster uh, and they would just appear. And so we would take them. And so my mom always said like she would only have a cat if it came to her. But then I go home and this woman had the audacity to adopt seven barn kittens. They're all named after Annie Griffith, they're adorable. And one of them is determined not to be a barn kitten and like desperately wants to come inside and like literally sits at the glass window like and will follow you around the house outside and be like, please let me in, please let me in. And my mom was like, no, you need to go outside. You need to catch mice because that is your job. But it made me miss kittens and cats. And I had so much fun. The one that was trying to come inside is Andy Griffith. That was his name. And I almost brought him home. I almost did. So I might get a cat because I had a lot of fun. And I haven't had a cat. Scout died ew, maybe 10 years ago, I think. So I haven't had a cat in 10 years. Maybe that'll be my next adventure. When I move into a new house, then I will. I need a little more space, I think. I don't have a place for a litter box right now. It would literally be disgusting. 
My producer, Bobby, guys, he just got a cat, though. His wife broke him down. He finally did it. Scheller's wife, guys, she also wants a cat. So leave a comment for Scheller and tell him to get his wife a cat, because he won't. He's on vacation right now, so he, he can't say anything about this. <laughs> the real person you also need to bully is Caleb. Caleb doesn't want any animals. Don't like animals at all. Caleb wants a duck. <laughs> Who is Brett's favorite author? Ugh. I don't even know. That's too many. That's like asking if I have a favorite child, if I had a favorite child. That's gonna like just lead the rumors that I have children. I was meaning like as a parent, asking if you have a favorite child. Van Austin. Yeah. I would say yes. What do I think? Because there are, I don't think that a Jane Austen novel is my favorite book. I said this on an All Access Life. Actually, Jane Eyre is my favorite novel by a long shot, I believe, but I have read more Jane Austen than any other author. I love her, I think she is fascinating. I think she's a fascinating case study in so many ways when it comes to like her literary style and her history and how she wrote all of these incredible, you know, romance novels and were so passionate, was so ahead of her time and never got married herself. And just, it was just really fascinating to me. So I, I do, I think you guys are very spot on <laughs> with that. And I talk about her a lot because of that. Because there's a lot of books that I love, but I don't love other things by the author. But there has never been anything that I've read by Jane Austen that I did not like and did not respect. So yeah, I think that's accurate. Okay, for the final question, mm -hmm. this one you can't really answer, so we're just gonna show you their responses. But the question okay. is, what does Brett mean to you? This is gonna make me emotional. <clears throat> Should I try to answer it? What do I mean to myself? <laughs> I'm going to a long conversation about self-esteem. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Honest in a country full of gross lies. Brett, along with the team at Daily Wire, tie back to what journaling should be honest. Somebody I can trust, okay? Entertainment, class, and a well-raised young woman who gives millennials hope the Gen Z isn't totally effed. I hope so, I try. Uh, keeping up to date and rational thinking. Uh, positive influencer, it's so weird hearing myself being called an influencer, who helps young people think for themselves in empowering ways, is kind of a role model. Um, people keep saying honest. And that, somebody said not much, she's a bunch of pixels on some server. That's, yeah, you're not wrong. That's actually quite accurate. It's very interesting, I'm gonna go back to like the really touching part about you guys saying that I'm honest and you care about me because that really is nice. But this is funny because it is true that, like I feel like I'm very, I am actually, you know, very honest with you guys. And I was talking with some good friends over the weekend where one of them asked like, do you feel like there's a discrepancy between like the comment section Brett and Brett is more of like a brand and the real Brett? And I really don't think there is. I feel like there is kind of a place where, you know, on camera Brett stops and then like real life Brett continues just because of the things that I obviously keep private or don't get the chance to talk about. But I do feel very, very fortunate that I get to sit in front of a camera and talk to you guys and like genuinely be myself and be accepted for that. And it's just a really, really wonderful feeling. But it is funny when I think about like how other people perceive me if we really want to get heady here. I'm not Jordan Peterson, but I feel like I'm talking like him right now where like I am a person on the internet to so many people. And I obviously am like, oh, I'm being so genuine and like, oh, I, I love, I'm like feeling all these things and I'm being so honest and all that stuff. And then I sit back and I'm like, oh, I wonder if it actually means anything to anybody because I literally am just a face on a screen. So that is very funny and it's accurate, but also I <laughs> am very, very humbled and appreciative of people, you know, saying that they feel like they can trust me. Um, but yeah, somebody said, just a chill chick with entertaining content. I wouldn't call myself chill. A person I can look up to and that I can easily relate to. Uh, funny to watch a person with a cynical attitude towards society. Yeah, that's true. I do feel like I am, I'm positive with my cynicism. And I think that that's important because the world is kind of going to shit, just saying. But we have to be able to laugh about things. And if we sit around and we, you know, do the whole like doomsday thing 24 seven, and you know, talk about the sexualization of children and you know, how our government is exploiting all of us and they want us to all be dependent and you know, we have to be prepped because we, you know, we're at the, you know, we depend on China, our entire government about like all of that stuff. That's not gonna be fun for anybody. And you know, obviously politics infiltrates every aspect of our world and the culture is kind of screwed right now. 
But if we spend all of our time thinking about that and being totally cynical and then being negative and dark with our cynicism, nothing's ever gonna get better. And I truly believe that humor and positivity and being able to relate to people is the way to win over hearts and minds and to hopefully create positive change, even though we do have to be realistic about the things going on. So I think it's striking a balance and I'm grateful that you think I can do that. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for contributing to this survey. This was super fun. I'm hoping in the future we can do more videos where I get anecdotes from you guys, where I can ask you questions. I do some videos like the man on the street things, but I would love to be able to really engage the online community. So thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to answer these questions. As it usually is, you know me better than I know myself by this point, and that's pretty cool. Before you go, make sure that you like this video if you have not already, subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a single comment section or off the clock episode. We are putting out new content every day, sometimes twice a day and even on weekends now, and I don't want you to miss a thing.